going to talk about combining like terms. Combining like terms. So first of all, what do we mean by like terms? And to really understand what like terms means, you have to understand what a term is. Okay. So we're going to start with an equation like something that you've seen before. If I have 3x plus 2 equals 2x minus 3. This is an equation. Okay. This equation is made up of two expressions. Here's an expression, and here's an expression. So an equation always has an equals sign. Look, equa is in the word. Equa equals. An equation has an equal sign. An expression does not. So this is an expression. As is this. And each of these expressions is made up of two terms. The terms are separated by plus signs or minus signs. So 3x <coughs> to 2x, and in this case we would say negative 2. These are all terms. And the cool thing about terms in an expression or in an equation is you can move them around using algebra. <coughs> so I could change this expression to be 2 plus 3x. I'm, I have the same terms, I just moved them around. <coughs> so equations, expressions, and terms. Terms are the building blocks. When we put two terms together or three terms together, we get an expression. And then when we put two expressions together, we get an equation. Oh, so that shows everything. It's like a chart. No, yeah, it's kind of like a chart, an organizational chart. I don't know why I wrote terms lowercase and everything else uppercase. But okay. Equations, expressions, and we're going to look at expressions today. We're not going to be solving equations. We're just going to be simplifying expressions. Oh, is it just so like if I had this expression, 3x plus 2x, what I want to notice is that my two terms both have x. This is 3x. And this is 2x. And if we think about what this means, what does 3x actually mean? It means x, x plus x plus x. That's what 3x means. What does 2x mean? x plus x. So wouldn't there be an easier way to write this? 1, 2, 3, 4. 5x? Isn't that a lot easier than 3x yeah. plus 2 Now, what do you notice about 3x plus 2x and 5x? 3 plus 2 equals 5. So we don't have to actually write out all our x's and count them. We can just add our coefficients. Yeah, or subtract. So, so this is not this is not really too hard. 3x plus 4x would be 7x. Seven. Seven. So we're mostly just adding. 5x minus 2x would be 3x. 18x plus 12x would be uh, 20. Oh yeah. 30. 
30 yet? 77x minus 32x. Oh, so it's just uh, adding both the numbers. Or, in this case, 40, 40, um, 45x. 45. Woo! Yeah. Alright, so we're just adding our coefficients. These numbers in front of x, these are called coefficients. Is that true? Uh, still be tonight? Your homework is going to be a little bit more complicated. Uh, so, <laughs> next level. Next level. Did you guys get down this example? Yeah. yeah. What if I have something in the way? So this is kind of the trick. If I have 3x minus 2 plus 4, I can still combine this term and this term. So what I want to do is I want to regroup these. Yeah, good. 7x is 3x plus 4x minus 2. And what you want to notice is the minus always stays with the term that it's in front of. Wait, you added the 4 to 3. So I added my 3x to 4x. Why didn't I add the 2? Or why didn't I subtract the 2? Because it doesn't have an x. So this is what we mean by like terms. Like terms have the same variable. If it doesn't have a variable, it has to stay separate. No, because this does not have an x. I can't subtract my 2. So this is your final answer. You've combined all of your like terms. And all you have now are two terms. One has a variable and one does not. So what if I have 5x minus 3 and then minus 2x? So my negative 3 I know immediately is going to go at the end. Okay. Now I have 5x, and what else do I have? Oh, I think I got the answer. 2x. Negative 2x. Do I have 2x? Negative. There's a negative 2x. Oh. I'm going to rewrite it like this. 5x minus 2x minus 3. I can do this. I can move my terms around as long as I keep the negatives with each term. So what is 5x minus 2x? 3x. 3x minus 3, which is the answer. We're going to do a couple more examples like that. So pay attention to the negatives in this one. 6x plus 2 minus 4x. I have a 6x, <coughs> and then I have a minus 4x. So 6x minus 4x is 2x, and then I have a plus 2. Okay. Can you give us some more? Hold on. So I'm just rearranging this over here. Now, if this is a little confusing, what I would do is I would just rewrite this, just like we did the last one. I think the lines under the those two x numbers are confusing to you. They're confusing to you? Okay, so look, I'm just keeping each term, right? Here's my 6x term, then I'm putting my negative 4x term. Why did I choose to put that one next? Why did I decide because that? Because they're, they're both x terms. But so you always and then I have my plus 2 at the end. Do you always circle the middle number so that way you know that it's a 1? No. Nope. So if I had, what if I had this? 5x minus 2 plus 3x um, plus 4x plus Which terms do I want to get together? The 5x, the 3x, the 4x, and the 5x. All of those, right? <laughs> and I, can I circle the, like, <coughs> the minus 2 just in case that way I don't get mixed up? Yeah, I like to. I like
like to kind of do that. Like I would put these ones all in boxes maybe. That helps. Some two minus two only two three. And then put them all together. So five plus three plus four plus five is seventeen minus two, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wait a second, what's wrong with that? What? You need the X. I need my X. It's not seventeen. It's 17 X's, right? Remember what we're doing. Oh, we have okay, like X plus 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 X Right? 17 of those. But it's just a lot shorter to write it out with 17 X. I get it now. Okay, I'm smart. So this has nothing to do with a negative 2. It's just a bunch of x's added together. Okay. Now, we could see a couple other things. What if I had this? 5x plus 3 plus 7. I have like terms here, but they're not the x terms. So, oh wait. So, 7, 8, 9, 10. So it's x uh, plus 10. 5 you guys got it. So I'm combining my like terms. Same thing. It's just that now my like terms don't have x's. Yeah. Can we do the uh, problems in all Yeah. Maybe. Let's finish our lecture. Okay. Um, this is much more simple. One last trick. You might see the distributive property. With the distributive property, before I can combine my like terms, I have to distribute. I can't move this 2x out of the parentheses because of my order of operations. My order of operations says I have to multiply this before I add these. Okay, so I'm going to follow PEMDAS. Now, what I need to do is 6x plus 3 plus 4x. And then I can combine my 6x and my 4x. Oh, better write this down. So now I have 6x plus 4x plus 3 or 10x. That's a lot of writing. It's a pizza. It's a pizza. Pizza, pizza. And I'm done. All right. One more. What if I had 3 plus 2 times 4x minus 1 plus 7x? Actually, I'm going to do, do this a little differently. Um, minus 2. Okay, this is a nice long problem. What I want to show you in this problem is what happens when you have some negative numbers. Okay, the first thing to notice is that I have parentheses and something outside of them, so I have to do that distributive property first. Now, what am I going to distribute and what is it going to be multiplied by? Well, I have my two here but it's also with a negative. So I have to distribute a negative 2. That negative 2 is going to be multiplied times 4x and times negative 1. So I'm going to leave my 3 out front. Then I have negative 2 times 4x, which is? So you're going to multiply those negative, negative yeah, so I'm going to say minus 8x. Oh, oh yeah, okay, I can do that. Because I have 2 and 4 makes 8, and negative times a positive makes a negative, and I have my x. Now negative 2 times negative 1. That's going to be a positive oh, 2. A negative times negative. Oh, okay. And then I'm done, because my parentheses end. 
So then I'm just going to copy the rest of this down. Minus 7x minus 8. So I only distribute the things that are in the parentheses, inside that parentheses. But when I distribute, just like we already talked about yesterday, I have to remember my negative if there's a negative attached to that number. Now I can find my like terms. So what are my like terms? I have a negative 8x. I have a negative 7x. And then I have a positive 3, a positive 2, and a negative 8. I'm going to rewrite this. So negative 8x minus 7x plus 3 plus 2 minus 8. Okay, my first two terms that are similar are negative 8x and negative 7x. What do I get if I combine negative 8 minus 7? Is it positive 15? Yeah, because I'm already way over here on my number line. I know negative 8 is somewhere over here. And I'm going to go even further. Right, here's 0. I'm going to go even further away from 0. So I have negative. And then I have plus 3 and plus 2 and minus 8. So what is 3 plus 2? OK. Now I have 5 minus 8. So what is 5 minus 8? Five minus eight is negative 3 and negative 2. Okay, so I'm looking even starting here. Positive 5 yeah. minus 8, which negative is three. negative 3. So minus 3. So I'm kind of skipping some steps here because I think you guys are, are ready for this. Really what I have is minus 15x plus negative 3. That's really what I have. But I'm just automatically turning plus a negative into minus. Okay. But I know this is, this is really, I have my plus still here. Right? So it's plus, and then this is negative 3. So it's negative 15x minus 3. That's it. But these are, it's really important to understand that when I have negative numbers, like negative 2x minus 3x minus 2 minus 7, I could write this as negative 2x plus negative 3x plus negative 2 plus negative 7. Each one of these is being added to the others, right? There are plus signs here. We are adding a negative 3x. Even though we don't really want to write it that way, because this is so long. And the plus signs start to look like x's when you're not careful enough. OK. So that's combining like terms. Combining like terms. And it's a little longer because it's applying a lot of stuff that you guys already know. Distributive property, right? variables, all these things that you've practiced. Any